Hey guys, Anthony from the Prado Hospital. Just uh, gonna first time we've seen this vehicle. It's here for a two hundred thousand case. Look, it's done two seventeen, but the two hundred was missed, and um, look, maybe the two ten. So we're gonna do whatever's on the two hundred and the two ten combined. So probably the most major service you do. <clears throat> It'll be like a 120 because at 120 you've got the things that come every 30,000 Ks which is your air filters and cabin filters type things and also your diff oils and brake fluid change and all that. So I'll just quickly run through what we're going to do. Basically end to end, um, we've checked over the vehicle. So checks aside, um, this is in relation to what we're going to be physically doing and changing as far as parts and oils go. So this bash plate's going to come off. We're going to investigate, see what's going on there with that uh, slight oil leak. Uh, we're going to change the engine oil, the front diff oil. Uh, transmission, I'm not sure about yet. We'll check on that one. Um, it's probably never been touched. Like I said, these things are pretty bulletproof, but um, always worth an oil change. It's the lifeblood of the transmission. Maybe this one, maybe this is going to be a big one already, so maybe we'll leave the transmission, it won't hurt to go another five or 10,000 till the next service, and then it's a smaller service plus the transmission, so we'll see what he wants to do. I think we'll do the uh, transfer case, or we might put that with the uh, transmission as well next service. Again, not the end of the world, but worth changing every now and then. Um, we're going to do that rear fuel filter up there above the tail shaft, which we've done other videos on. And the rear diff oil okay so obviously 24 mil plugs pretty straightforward a diff level ground as long as there's no recalls and things and you need to be aware of that because some diffs didn't work out too well the way they mounted them in some cars and the angles and there's actual recalls where you've got to jack it up and have the back of the car up and the bottom down to get the level right setting it by the plug level so be aware of that um, nothing that I know of on the Prados fortunately so level ground and obviously when it overflows out that filler plug, that's the deal. No need to over tighten it or anything. Um, we're going to change the brake fluid. So, you know, that needs to be bled through the whole system through each caliper every 40,000 or every two years, most manufacturers recommend. So that's what we're going to be doing on this one. The brakes and tires look okay. There's a few other things that need doing, but this video is not about the checks. It's to let you know what we're doing and we'll um, slowly run you through those jobs as we do them maybe not all of them there's no point sitting there watching brake fluid it's a bit you know look brake when it comes to brakes maybe see an expert because um, it can be a matter of life and death um, and as always say if you're not sure what you're doing don't do it just take it to someone that knows but if you can gather the information and you're confident and you're you know normally do your own servicing this is just to sort of help you with that so Rear diff oil, lube the drive line, change the rear fuel filter, maybe the transfer case, maybe the transmission, the engine oil, and the front diff. So we'll start off with getting that front bash plate off and draining the engine oil. Okay, so now we've got that bash plate off, just four 12 mil bolts. Um, just investigating that oil leak, and it was a leak. Looks to be, it's nothing, the sump obviously hasn't been hit. We weren't, didn't think it was going to be the case, but we weren't sure. And the sump plug's not leaking either. Doesn't look like it's, the wash has been replaced for a while either, so we'll replace that. See how it's a bit squashed? We don't replace it every time. When it starts to look a bit squashed, we'll see more once it's off. Has been a little bit over tightened because I can see the sump's a little bit bent on a slight angle. The, um, the bolt, see the rear end of it's a little bit up, but anyway. Should be all right. Um, that oil is coming down from the oil filter drain tube. That's what this is. So there may be a leak up at the oil filter, so we'll investigate that. We haven't had a good look around up there. We changed the oil filter last. We'll do all the underneath stuff first. So we'll drop the engine and the front diff oil now. Okay, so we've got the uh, drain tray in place. Not that you can see that or not. I don't know, anyway. Uh, we'll pop that sump plug out. Let's crack that loose. Pull down. Okay, so the washer stays stuck up on the sump on these. Usually every car is different. Of course, we're talking about 1KD FTVs. That's what we work on. Uh, 
Um, so while the engine all drains, we'll get the tools ready to remove the front diff fill and drain plug, which is a 10 mil single hex. One we've got, look, I'm not sure what brand it is, but it says Germany on it. Yeah, I'll show you the one. We've been using it a long time. So that one, that's whatever it is. I don't even know where I got that from. Uh, Germany quality. Look, it's done a lot of this. You can see it's it, it's lost its colour, but it's in really good condition anyway. And we use about a three foot bar for these because you want to get a fair swing on it because people over tighten them. So we'll just pop the drone tray over to the left a little bit as much as we can, really. So we can get that, make sure this is, goes in all the way and it's nice and clean, and then it's a, just a big like that. And if you've got the right tools, usually you don't have a problem. If you do, look, it's probably because you're on the ground, you haven't got the long quality bar that you can get the swing on and the quality tools, that sort of thing. A lot of people have trouble with those, they carry them on the pork chop. As a DIY, I get it because you're on the ground and you haven't got room for the long bar. That's where a hoist definitely pays off for these sorts of jobs. Um, usually I'd recommend make sure you get the filler plugs undone first every time but I can guarantee it's not going to be an issue I've done a few of these little breaker bar no problem yeah that was the little you know what's that 18 inches or something so that's ready to drain as well so we'll just slip the drain tray bit of efficiency get two things going at once so we've got a Look, there's different drone tray systems. This is what works for us. It's about a 16 litre tray, so we can fit quite a lot into there. Take the filler plug out first to allow the air go in for the oil to come out. Go up a little bit more or we might miss. Adjustment. See that front diff oil, not bad at all, that's what it usually looks like, I'm not sure if you can see that, how much you can see or not or whatever, uh, not much, but look it's not too bad, that's what they normally look like, no point uh, watching you, sorry, showing you what it looks like while the oil drains, so we're going to let that drain for a while, um, we've got some other drain trays, we'll probably move along with this one and leave that one there and let those drain a little bit extra. We're going to move on to the uh, rear diff oil and while that's draining maybe change the rear fuel filter catch you there just having a look at the plugs and washers just wanted to show you you can see the old sump plug washer that's on the left the black looking one see how squashed it is but when you see them like that's that's when it's time to uh, replace them look you know they say you should replace it every time i'm more of a only do it if it needs it now we don't want to be complacent and not do things when they need doing, but we don't want to be overdoing it either, you know. Little rip-off consumables, you know what I mean? Two bucks something, whatever, for a sump plug washer. So it might be every three, four, five oil changes. When you see it squashed down, it's been re-squashed a few times, you know. Look, you don't see them leaking. We never see them leaking. We should never say never. My son says, you just said it twice, never say never. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is... Never say never, but look, we don't see them leaking, so it's not a big issue, but I suggest you change it every few oil changes, you get the picture. Now this silver one, is obviously made of some type of alloy. The original one is copper, so we replace it with a genuine one. They're only, again, about two bucks each, probably closer to the price since it is copper. Copper costs a bit more, but anyway. Little rip off things, but that's fine. Um, front diff plug, again, you don't have to replace it every time. It's more if the plug's damaged, you need to replace the plug. If the hex is damaged or if people have hit it with a hammer, because it is quite soft material, that's part of the problem. It's over tightened and it's not really soft, but it's quite soft compared to what it could be and then it wouldn't be an issue. But if people hit it with a hammer to get it loose because it's been over tightened, that does bend the, the plug slightly and then you don't get the same clamping pressure on, even clamping pressure on the copper washer and you'll see the leak because it'll have a black mark on the copper where the oil has been leaking past. But with a new, this one doesn't have that. It's fine, it wasn't leaking. So 
Let's just have a look at the other end of the plug if you like, you know. Actually, it has been hit. Yeah, it, it has been hit. There you go. So we'll see, it'll be interesting to see. Well, this one can be a bit of a test. I don't know if you can see that. See, it's been hit at, up at this end here. This is what I mean. People. Just don't have a time. See, it's got a little bit of twisty marks on it from people trying to undo it and do it up. Both ways, actually. Anyway. It wasn't leaking, so we're going to roll with the odds that it'll be alright. Hopefully it will. If it's not, we'll know next time to put a uh, new plug on it. But, you know, 20 bucks for a plug. Um, it wasn't leaking. It has, yeah, I hadn't checked it yet, but definitely it's had some hits up here. So, maybe we'll replace it, because, you know, to be sure, to be sure. Anyway, we'll decide on that one. Just wanted to show you the plugs. So, information for you. There you go. So obviously this goes on here. It's a nice snug fit compared to that other sloppy thing. All right, genuine parts is the go for a couple of bucks each. Have a nice day. Okay, so before you put the uh, engine oil drain plug back in, get in with your light, look from this direction, that direction, front, rear, left and right, and have a look at that all pick up, make sure it's clear. If you don't know why you're doing that, well, what I'm talking about, you need to go and study and watch the other videos, right? Like I always say, subscribe so you don't fall behind even further. Lots of information, years and years of information to share with you, okay? So, check your oil pickup. Some plugs are going to go back in. Um, the standard torque setting is, I think it's 34 Newton meters. I reverse engineered it once. Actually, that's not right. I reverse engineered it a few times. What I mean is, you know, I've been doing this for a little while, you know, professional oil changer, and I just nip it nicely, going by feel. And I went, well, am I getting it right or not? So I think I worked it out, and I had, it was 35 that I had on it. And then I looked it up and it said 34 and I went, well that's pretty good. So I'm happy with about that. If you're confident to uh, go ahead and do it by hand, that's fine. I've only ever had one that came in that he um, over tightened it and damaged the uh, sump. And it's not like you can really re-tap it or put a helicoil in red ones, unfortunately. You've got to really replace the sump. They're about just under 200 bucks, plus obviously the seal and the time to change it. We spray a bit of black brake cleaner on it. Just to um, clean up that last bit of oil residue. So that you know that you haven't got any oil leaks. You know when you go and check the car, like there is an oil leak there. So we want to make sure that uh, we know what's going on. We're going to put that front diff drain plug back in now also. Anyway, there's no point you watching me do that. I mean, yeah, look, let, let's do that part. Let's get the drain plug back in and hook that up so okay so we need to drop the drain tray out of the way a little bit which you probably can't see anyway but that's all right yeah a lot of torque specs i haven't read for years i'll just go off the top of my head um once again one of those things I can get away without using a torque wrench because I've been doing it a long time, particularly on these. Well, not a long time. I haven't been doing it a long time. Let's not say that one. I've been around 100 years. No, no. It's not really a long time, is it? But um, I'm pretty sure it's like 50. What is it? 55 or 50? I reckon it's 59 on the drain plug on the front diff. So, look, I can tell you 60 is around number that you can remember and 60 will work well. 60 is good on the drain plug, so... Set that on 60 and just bingo. So it's not that tight at all. all right? That's the problem why people over tighten it because they crank down on it thinking they've got to be, you know, it's got to be really tight, whatever. So look, it's going to get boring watching me talk and fill up diffs and oils and whatever. So I'll leave it at that and we'll move on to the next part. We're just going to um, fill up the front diff, put the plug in and uh, talk that up to the filler plug. I'd read, I think it's 49 on the rear diff on the filler and the drain and the filler on the front also 49. So just go 50, even numbers, right? So 50, 50, 50 all around. 
and then 60 on the drain plug will work fine or if you're happy just go by feel with the new washer just don't over tighten it you know if it's loose you can tighten well if it falls out it's not going to be good either is it so look you know you know what your skills are it's up to you to decide how you're going to do it check the manufacturer's torque specs and use a torque wrench is probably the best way all right guys moving on all right so moving along to the transfer case that's behind the transmission it's not part of any standard service to change the oil but it says under severe conditions well you work out what severe conditions are it only takes about I don't know a litre and a half not much I'd suggest that oil is a lot cheaper than a transfer case which I believe is a bit over three grand so if you were to do it every 40,000 k's, that would be good maintenance. Now the oil doesn't ever look that bad either. It's one of those things, not too bad. So look, you probably don't need it. So, you know, if you can't be bothered or you want to save a buck, you could probably not do it ever. Or you could do it every 100,000 or every 200,000. I really don't think it's going to hurt it much not doing it. Depends how much off-road you do, how much low range, because that's going to cook it a bit more. Uh, I'm not an oil expert. Chap of all trades, master of none. <laughs> or maybe master of a few, but anyway. Um, look, this one's, this is like a 200,000. I'll try and do them on a 200,000 service. I'll definitely put it out there as an option around the 120. Um, if people want to do it every 40, we'll do it every 40. But I don't mind not doing it every 40. I'd probably say I prefer at one at least every 120, or if not, at least at 200,000, and then you know, probably a bit more often after that. New clean things always seems to be better the first time. So that oil is pretty well drained already. There's nothing to check or see or do there. It's just put the bottom plug in, top it up again till it overflows out the top hole with the correct oil. Look, the best way, just look in your, the book in your Toyota, because every vehicle varies a little bit, you know, I can give you some oils to use, but there's a number of different ones, and people are going to ask, what brand, how about this, how about, look, what, whatever brand you want, you know what I mean, oils, oils, you know, the old ad, so oils ain't oils, well, kind of oils are oils a little, they ain't, ain't but look, good brands of oil, specifications, you've got to look at that, it doesn't really matter as much the quality of the oil, I'm not saying use cheap rubbish oil, but you know, one oil, oh, this stuff's really good, you know, what is it like? 0.08765, you know, percent better than that one or whatever, you know. So, look, it doesn't matter that much. Use the correct specification oil, whatever you like, okay? At the moment, I'm using Penrite brand oils, so I'm going to top that one up. That's the transfer case. Okay, so we've done the transfer case. They're 24 mils into alloy. Whatever you do, don't over tighten those. To be honest, I don't even know the torque spec. I don't know if it's something around the 30 or 40, 39 or 29 or, mate, you can let me know. You can hit me with a comment and let me know. I do it by hand. Always done it by hand. Don't over tighten them, don't leave them loose. It's easy enough to do, but it's easy enough to get it wrong. So I suggest you check the manufacturer's torque specs, use a torque wrench, top it up to the overflow line. Now we're doing the rear diff. It's all pretty straightforward, you know. But look, some people want to see it. I take the filler plug out first, kind of like, bit of a habit where you make sure that you're getting it out you know and it was never going to be an issue I've obviously cracked them loose just a normal breaker bar with the 24 mil and then uh, get that oil out happy days uh, what else can I tell you what else can I tell you about it okay so engine oil diff oil we've done the transfer case rear diff so we're going to let that drain out I'm going to clean the uh, magnet there's a magnet on the bottom of through the magnet there and picks up all the fine bit of wear and tear you know all the fine metals and stuff out of the oil so give that a clean so hopefully it can do a better job again and it's up to you if you want to replace the washer same deal as the others really I mean it, it's pretty wise to just change them every time if you want but uh, I can tell you we've re reused them a number of times and haven't had an issue either. The ones we're more likely to replace, if they look bad or if it comes in with a bit of a sweat around it, which that one's got a little bit of a sweat around the feeler as well. 
Um, so maybe it's had enough uses. Obviously other places it's been to, they don't replace them either. So, um, so we're gonna obviously put that bottom plug back in first, top it up to the overflow point, and then we'll get onto the next step of the more major service. So while that, while that rear diff oil is draining, I'm gonna get in and change this fuel filter. First step is to undo the two 10 mils. I've probably got my big head in the way. Right, so we're gonna take those out. Two 10 mil bolts, one. I'm not sure how well you can see. I've got a light shining up there. I've done the best I can, you know. Um, so those two bolts, go put those on the bench. This is what we do anyway. Chuck the rag over the tail shaft because a little bit of fuel is going to leak out. Not much, a few drips usually. I'll say usually, because never say never, but usually. So it's put it over the tail shaft and tuck it into that fuel guard a little bit. Usually works best. It may fall out of place for what we want anyway. But And then if you can watch the other YouTube video, it'll show you a bit more how to release these clips. Okay, so we've got heaps of videos, hundreds of videos. There's one clip released. And just be aware, people do say, yeah, you do make things look easy. I'll probably make some things look hard too, whatever. It's not about me. I'm, the warning is, just be careful because it might not be as easy as it looks. So I've released the clips. I'll give it a bit of a bang like that to get any dust out of the clips. I've got my new fuel filter over here on the bench. I'm ready to go. So not that it's going to leak, but have it ready in case for whatever odd reason it does decide to start leaking out. I don't know, maybe the tanks are full or something. Maybe that could be an issue. And then just both the lines gently pull on the two lines at the same time. That's what I do. And pop it out. I'll put my finger over it. There it is there. I don't know if you can see that. Sit that in the drain tray, we've just got the diff oil still draining, we're doing this while the diff oil is draining. Right, so that's draining, I'll go grab the new filter. New one goes straight up and in. There's two lines. Directly on, just make sure you've got them pushed on and then push those orange clips back through All right, which they're both done and once you've got them clipped just give the lines a bit of a gentle pull to make sure they are locked on then you can use your rag that's already here to give those clips in that area a bit of a wipe it's diesel fuel, you're not going to get it all off and you can give the tail shaft a bit of a wipe if you think you want to spill some there but we did pretty well on that one, doesn't always work out that way Oh yeah, look how quick that happened. Look, let's say it didn't always happen that quick. There's other people around that'll tell you how hard things are, but look, they've blown their credibility anyway. I don't think they've got any credibility left with anyone. You just gotta watch who you listen to. I don't wanna tell you things are hard or things are easy. As I said, everyone's got different capabilities and I'm not saying I'm the best, I'm just okay. I can figure it out and I think I do a pretty good job, so that fuel filter's done. Now that it's mounted, I'll grab the rag again and just give it another wipe. Again, you probably can't see what I'm doing. Big head, you're probably looking at the back of a big, big head. Anyway, right, it's all pretty clean. Ideally, um, hit it with the uh, degreasing and pressure washer. At the end of the job we give um, most vehicles a wash down, at least the engine bay usually, sometimes the car, depends on time we've got, what the weather's like, how dirty the car is. You keep it clean and respect it, then we might do the same. If you bring it in pretty filthy, uh, you're not going to get much love, we'll just clean what we have to do to get the job done and charge you for it.
Um, so that pretty well covers changing the fuel filter. So, so far on this we've done the engine oil, the front diff, the transfer case. We're about to put the plug in and refill the rear diff. We've done the rear fuel filter. Next we'll be lubricating the drive line, I think. The other thing with your rear diff, just check this uh, rear diff breather. There it is, middle of the picture. Make sure it's not caked in mud, just give it a bit of a, you know, that's all, you know, as long as it seems clean, free, and it can move up and down. Otherwise, um, you can spray a little bit of um, brake cleaner or something around it and just work it around to get it all loose. If that becomes blocked, it can create a pressure, which will result in your, um, pinion seal probably leaking or something else all right guys hope that's helped move on to the next stage so next we're going to lubricate this drive line so you've got your rear shaft this is a Prado so you got that one clean it first the slip joint and another uh, uni joint in there and basically the same on the front so you got six right it's really important that these get done at least every now and then so uh, we give the nipples a clean before and after usually you don't want to push that dirt into the thing and then it's going to jam it open and whatever so give it a good clean up first um, you need a quiet environment it's a bit of a look and listen as soon as grease makes a noise or a sound starts coming out that's when we stop with the uni joints the slip joint the rear one depends what grease going I can say how many pumps but look a smaller man into that slip joint not as much as what's been in there sometimes I'd rather have too much in it coming out than not enough but um, same deal here with this front one, you know, a little bit less than the front one. All right, guys, we'll go ahead and do that. All right, so we've lubed the drive line, have a bit of a, like I said, the safety check and everything we're checking, we're not doing that in this video. It's more of the things we're changing and replacing and how we go about that. And we probably not, might not fit everything in because obviously it's a stop start scenario, might miss something, whatever. So that's why I always say watch all the other videos. You're going to pick up lots of little bits of information here or there. We had the bash plate off and gave that a good clean up. We believe the oil filter is what the leak is up there, but we haven't looked at it yet. But I'm confident that's where it was coming from. So. It's an aftermarket filter. I don't know if the Ryko filter is a problem. Could have a damaged seal, a double seal. It could be loose, I really don't know. But we've cleaned up this and we gave it a little tap out. We don't spend too much time on it, obviously. Um, but straightened it out a little bit. And uh, we're gonna drop it down now and go and do some filters and that up in the engine bay side of things. So catch you there. Hey okay, guys, so most of the underneath stuff's done. Just wanna say, I can't guarantee we're gonna cover everything, but. The general guide, we're going to cover most things, I suppose, as far as till the uh, battery goes flat anyway. Um, I'm not going to include much detail with the brake fluid change, because as I've mentioned, just touched on it earlier, it is, look, when it comes to brakes, it's a bit of a matter of life and death, you know, changing oil is one thing, you might blow up your diff or something by forgetting to put oil in or leaving the plug loose, but when it comes to brakes, I think you need to uh, really know what you're doing, you don't need me to tell you how to do it. If you don't know, you can't figure out how to bleed brakes and change brake fluid, um, don't touch it. Take it to an expert. That's probably the best advice I can give you. Um, so we're doing a brake fluid change and flush on this one as well, but it won't be part of the video. What we're gonna look at now, it's a 200 and a 210 together. And on the 210, the air filter's due. Now we're not exactly sure what's been done, so our client has recently obtained this vehicle. So we're sort of, the book's not filled out for the 200, so we're not sure what was done with the 210 either, really. So we're going to have a look and see and figure it out. Aftermarket air filter. That is very average, so that'll go in the bin. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that aftermarket air filter. I prefer genuine. I do use genuine only. 
unless you were to provide, if you want to provide parts and bring aftermarket parts and whatever, you know, you can do that. Now we're just going to have a look on the do the usual on the clean side. Not too bad, so that's good. But it hasn't been off road either. We've got we've got a rag here. It's a bit dirty, a bit oily, whatever. We're just going to uh, we sort of like that because it picks up the dust a bit better. I just give the um, perimeter where the seal sits a good clean. And there is a bit of dust on the clean side, so you know it's it's not too bad. It's just the usual, like it's quite common, you know. So uh, you know what we do. It's in other videos. Been over it before, and clean the seal on the other side as well. If there's stuff in there, you can back it out, blow it out, whatever you want to do. Just cover the cover this side if you're going to use compressed air, so that the rubbish doesn't blow into. Because what would be the point then, right? You want a demonstration? Okay, well let's do that. Let's shake off any debris off that rack. We just hold that there while we're blowing, right? So let's do that. I'll go get the uh, compressed air. Might be noisy for a sec. Might not be too. So we've got the air here ready to go now. Just want to cover up. That's the part that matters. The clean side. Of course, watch your eyes and whatever whenever you're doing this. Demonstration, right? There was like two leaves in there. It's not if it was full of dust and everything, you know, you'd probably cover up a whole lot of things. I wouldn't even do it in the workshop if it was like that. I'd probably wipe it out, take it out. I'll wash it out, you know what I mean, if it's that bad. So anyway, make sure there's no debris left against that rag, you know, that got blown up there. Again, just have another look and a checksy. Happy days. I don't mind, see this oily rag, if any dust does get past, it's gonna help stick so then we know what's going on next time. You know, we're gonna see, oh look, you know, that's been leaking, but we won't have these issues. Let's grab it out a new genuine Toyota air filter. I'll slip you the part number on that one. These suit the 120s and the 150 Pratos. 17801 30080. I think they retail for about 60 bucks, so expensive bit of paper, that's for sure. What you do get is the uh, pre cleaner part that's stuck over the top, which I think helps. And see the pink dot? That's for when it sits in the airbox, there's a hole there. See where my green glove finger is, left side? There's a hole there, and you can see if the pink's clean, then the air filter's clean, so there's no need to open it up. and it's kind of like risk the breeze getting in there by opening that. If you don't, uh, look, I think we've covered this in other videos anyway, so if you want to see what I'm doing now, I'm putting some grease on the seal. I just use, it's a Castrol rubber grease that, uh, this tub, I'll show you the tub, it's about 20 years old. I'll use it sparingly. Right, there it is, it's a really old tub. It wouldn't even come in that colour anymore. I don't even know if the product is good, but I love the stuff. Always use a little bit on some rubber seals components on suspension a lot of them we don't use it on we put them on dry we used to use them a lot on sway if you've got squeaky sway bar rubbers you know those d bushes that was a problem on the old falcon you know the eas and ebs really bad squeaks going over speed humps a good old rubber grease on those d bushes work the trick i'll just put some grease on that Gotta clean it off me so I can uh, pick up the I don't know, I'm getting a bit on the filter, you know, like that's just grease, it's gonna help filter a bit, but it just looks untidy, so we try not to. We can't guarantee it. Okay, so we're going to so so we just got a bit of grease on the right, so that'll just sit in nicely because it's genuine. This seal here, right? Okay, and that'll just slip on. So yeah, just, see the sloppy fit, how it slides up and down? That's what I'm saying. So, but look, it should seal from the crush, top and bottom, but I think they should fit a bit tighter anyway. But look, it's how it is. It should crush down, but you know, as the seals get older, maybe they squash and let go. I, the grease really does work to help prevent that. So if you're an off-roader and you want to prevent that dust and dirt getting past to the clean side as much as possible, we highly recommend that. And cleaning the map sense is gonna be part of this as well. Um, you know what, let's just do it while we're at it. It could make a very long video. So 
I'm going to do it now, but I'm going to um, speed it up a bit for you. I'm just going to unplug it, take the two screws out, clean the sensor with CRC mass air flow sensor cleaner and blow it dry and lubricate. I'm going to clean the hole, lubricate the hole, not the O-ring because that gets messy around the sensor. We'll just lubricate the hole with some Molly Coat Triple One. Another use of the Molly Coat, you know, on the injectors, the seals, on the O-rings, all O-rings. Right, anyway, and then we're going to slip it back in. Don't over tighten those screws because you'll pull the plastic out of the box. I've seen that a number of times and plug it in. So we'll do that. Okay, that's the uh, MAF sensor cleaned as per the instructions. Uh, we'll just move over this side and I think it's time to have a look. You're not going to see much of what I'm doing again. I'm going to go down in around that oil filter area and try and see if we can see what's going on with why the oil's leaking from that aftermarket oil filter. I'll just keep it rolling while I go and have a look. So I can tell you if there's something obvious going on. It's very rare that I see oil leaking down those uh, oil filter drain tubes. Uh, okay, looking down there, yep, it's definitely very messy. So what we'll do is, the light there, I don't know if that's going to work for you. You can't really see the oil filter. You know, I'll just try and show you the oil down there. See the oil? Quite messy. So there's something going on there. Uh, so I've had oil filters, and we're not picking on brands. Um, it's just what it is. I've had oil filters both genuine, I'm not naming brands, not necessarily Toyota genuine, I don't think I've had a problem with a genuine Toyota filter. Genuine brands in other brands and aftermarket I've had leaking at the seam where it's, you know, folded around the bottom. I've had O-rings damaged on Ryko filters. Oh yeah, that's loose, so that's not good. So we'll get that off. A bit loose and the seal's gone hard maybe, didn't even have to put a tool on it, it was just, you know, barely wasn't even hand tied, it was hand loose. There it is, right? Um, looking at the bottom there. Look, I can't really tell looking at the bottom which side was leaking, but it just doesn't matter anyway, right? So once again, not a big deal, as expected. Um, just gonna have a look down around there. Make sure it all looks legit. No damage to that area no nah, it looks good so i think it was just a matter of uh bodgy brothers you know as i wrote that post somewhere last night i had a you know when i do posts i just i don't you know i'm not on facebook a lot i just have this i have a brainwave idea and i just go bang and i just put it out there you know so that's what it's all about there it is a post here a post there and i might have a few and one thought leads to another thought um Okay, so I'm just giving that surface a clean so it's nice and so I'm not cleaning outside just where the seal's going to sit. I'm not cleaning inside and I'm not cleaning outside, if you know what I mean by that. I'll actually show you again as well. But we're just cleaning that surface area and once we put the new filter on, which comes pre-lubricated on the O-ring, it's a bit of a different type seal. I think it's going to be more reliable that it's not going to be damaged, to be honest. Quality and that looks a bit better. I'll bring that over. Comes with a plastic cover over the end to save any contamination. And as I said, the O-ring is uh, pre-lubricated. There it is, the bottom of the genuine filter. So we'll just have a look over here. Again. Now you can see the surface is all clean. Don't worry about the shadows. The surface is all clean, the part that matters, if you know what I mean. So. We're uh, ready for that oil filter to go on, and once the job's done and dusted, we'll give it a really good degrease and clean around the outside there. And if you're wondering how tight these oil filters need to be, oil, I always say hand tight 
and hand tight by someone with a bit of strength. So, yeah, they say on them, what is it, once it contacts an extra three quarters of it, or whatever it is, I don't know. I haven't read it for years. With the genuine ones, basically by hand, I feel that O-ring squash down, so it makes contact, it squashes, and then the metal touches the alloy, and it stops. It's not going to go any further than that, so it's a set point it's going to go to, and if you put a tool on it, you're just digging that steel from the oil filter into the alloy base, which you don't need to do. It's just hand tight, it's tight enough, there's enough resistance there that it's not going to come undone, and I would go as far to say as if the oil filter didn't make it all the way to touch the alloy, it still wouldn't come undone because it's an O-ring, and that resistance is just going to um, keep it from un unspinning, if you know what I mean. So hand tight, but that doesn't mean you'll get it off by hand when it's time to get it off, so you'll need a tool to get it off usually. So that's that all sorted, that's good. Just turn this way a little bit. Fuel filter. Now, this fuel filter under the bonnet, This a lot of people get confused with this, a lot of people in the trade. Um, basically, this filter, in older vehicles, quite often in other brands, every 40,000 K, some every 30,000, maybe some every every 20,000. Um, this is a quite expensive filter on the 150. The genuine one's about 100 bucks. I think list prices, it's about 90 or something plus GST, or is it 99 plus? I don't know, it doesn't matter. It's close to 100 bucks. If you get it a bit under that, you know, 80, 90 bucks, you're doing pretty well, I think. That's still expensive, but look, I recommend changing it every 40,000 Ks because let's go back to the old intervals. Why would you just wait till the light? There's a pressure sensor here that sends the light on. There's a, a sensor at the bottom for water as well. We don't usually see water. I've mentioned that before. We, look, I don't say, never say never, but you know, very, very rarely. So, um, but I recommend changing it every 40,000 based on what we see. Uh, I'm not gonna go into that too much. So we've done videos on changing this this gray plug at the back you don't need to butcher it up or any tools you just slip it sideways like that and it comes off amazing over 200,000 k's and that gray plug there is not butchered like they normally are so you just slip it off like that because it makes it easier to unplug but you don't actually have to slip it off because it's part of the housing that we're going to take to the bench anyway so it's easy as pushing it in uh, let me find the spot there it is there right so that's unplugged there's the end of the plug we'll leave that in the vehicle Right, if that would just stay down there to be out of the picture to, for your not confusion. So the other end of the plugs there, that comes from the water sensor at the bottom. And to get it out, you just slip it towards the side of the vehicle like that, see? No butchery. Um, you know, you guys work out what's real and what's not, but while it's like that, I can't find the hole. But anyway, it's coming unclipped, there it is. It's coming unclipped on the vehicle. Um, obviously you need pliers to remove those clamps, um, something to take these two 12 mils off, take the whole assembly to the bench and then watch my other video on changing over that fuel filter. So once again, as I said, there's no point you watching me uh, do this in detail, so I'll speed it up a bit. Alright guys, so that's the fuel filter changed. I'm just going to think through if there's any other tips I can give you. Um, because if you've had the light come on, you need to clear it after you change the filter. Just start the car with this unplugged and plug it in after the car's started and running. Should clear the light for you. Um, yeah, molly coat on those O-rings on the, each end of that filter. So pretty well every O-ring on the injectors, on the fuel filters. On the map. So if you buy the injector kit office, you know, you get the molly coat. Well, there's a whole heap of other uses. I'm sure there's other stuff as well. I should do a video. 101 uses of molly coat triple one. Maybe that's why it's called molly coat triple one. 111 uses of molly coat triple one. There you go. I reckon there probably is. On Prado's is at least 10 uses. So 
handy, expensive little tube to have. So, we've got to put oil back into it. Okay, the oil filter's changed, you saw that. The air filter's done. Um, you obviously need to check the coolant level, and I notice this one seems to be down a little bit. Um, so I'll probably recommend a coolant change for next service. We'll top this one up. I can't see that the water pump's leaking at this stage, so we'll try and find out a bit of history if it's been changed or if the coolant's low. Could be low because someone's done it and they've, they've had some air and it's dropped low, so we'll top it up. See how it goes till the next service and probably recommend a coolant change, a transmission change, then we're pretty well covered almost, almost all fluids. Um, so it's the first time we've seen this vehicle, so it's a matter of doing a bit of homework and work out what it needs, but covering most things on that two and 210,000 K service. We've still got to do the cabin filter as well. We're going to replace that. So I think it's time to put some oil back in the engine. We'll go ahead and do that. We'll speed it up a bit. Okay, so that almost covers it. We've got a few other things we're going to show you still, but so we've put oil in. We put seven liters in. Check it on the dipstick. Dipstick goes in once oil's in. Going to drive it, get it warm, do a diagnostic on it. When we come back, park it on flat ground. Five minutes after you switch it off, check and set your oil level then. It should be between the two marks. I like to go up close to the top mark. If you leave it sitting a long time, it's going to be higher. And if you check it sooner, it's going to be lower. That's why they specify five minutes after you switch it off. Um, we've topped up that coolant a little bit. Okay, we've topped up the washer bottle and added some uh, windscreen concentrate. Brake fluid change is done. Bit of a grubby engine base, so we're going to clean that up. We're going to change the cabin filter. Uh, power steering level, you can see, is not bad. Uh, I've talked about that before. The racks can have a slow leak. Um, not worth the massive expense for a very small weep, generally. So just keep an eye on that and take note of how much you might be putting in every 10,000. We'll probably top that one up a little bit because it is... It's, not, it's between cold minimum and cold maximum, okay, but we prefer to have it cold maximum or hot minimum whatever the case may be once it's warm so we'll probably top that up a little bit so in this engine bay the things were replaced as part of the service we spoke about at the start was the brake fluid the air filter the oil filter the fuel filter over there and um, you know other things you've got to check and i can tell you already let's have a look at this battery so it's been replaced by kmart what's what do you reckon the chances are it's going to be insecure So there you go. Anyway, look, let's not blame Kmart. Let's just say, well, it's a Kmart batch sold and installed maybe at some point, but someone else must have loosened the brackets off. Or in fairness, look, they do, sometimes the batteries squash it. You don't want to over tighten them. This is important as well. You don't want to over tighten these and squash the plastic casing of the battery. Um, Century won't like that. Um, but look, you can see that one, that is that loose at both sides. It was never really, I think they've tightened it up, you know, on an angle like that. When you're on an angle, of course, it makes the rods longer. So then when it moves back to central position. So you got to make sure you've got it all central. So we're going to nip those up as well. So like I said, that's more part of the checks. We go over the whole vehicle, bumper to bumper and check everything. It's possible you can always miss something. There's a lot of stuff on a motor vehicle, but um, working on the same vehicles all the time, it's pretty easy to pick out obvious things checking the aircon pipes aren't rubbing stuff like that as well but that's all covered in other videos this one was mainly about okay what gets done and a bit of how to do it at those bigger services 200 and 210 and covered most of all our component component replacements and the ones you didn't see in detail we've got in other videos so make sure you subscribe before before diesel on youtube more videos coming your way all right guys we're going to add a little bit more on yet we've still got to do the cabin filter we're going to clean this engine bay and do a diagnostic there's a few things we'll include in this video. Something else we do as part of every service, uh, fairly important, is the diagnostic. So, the engine is cold. So, your usual load reading we uh, rate is quite important. Not so important when it's cold because it's going to be high. I don't even bother looking at it. The only ones that are important are those feedback values. This set of injectors would be full DLC and um, just 
looking at that reading there, number three going up and down. Well, they can do this, but oh, these would be full DLC, but they've done 217,000 kilometers. So there's a chance that um, they've got some wear on them anyway. That's why we're going to check it out. Not only by the diagnostic, but have a listen to it, the smoke situation. Anyway, we've done other videos on diagnostics, so you need to watch those. Uh, these I'll probably be changing just the fact that they've probably never been changed and it's done quite a lot of Ks, 217 odd. And they're getting around about to that age, about the seven year thing. But look, your choice, you can push it out further if you like. It's not an absolute must. We need to have statistics on when they fail and people cracking pistons and all sorts of stuff. So if you want to be part of the statistics that uh, end that way. Please just let us know uh, what happened, how long they're in there, and when they failed, and what the history is, so we can uh, log that. Moving on to the next part of the service. All right, guys, I'm going to show you the easy way to change your cabin filter. Now, we don't know what other people have been in there and done previously, but there's different ways to do things. This is how we do it. Open the glove box. This car's really clean, actually, by the way. Love it. It's a GX. I think it's a 13 or a 14, it is the update, so I think it's late 13, but the update must happen, whatever anyway, it doesn't matter. Point is, I like the GX, the black trim, and it's just so simple and basic, and it's nice and clean, this vehicle, love it. So open your glove box, check what deals you got at um, Macca's, loyalty card, Ooh. and I need a few more of those before you get a free coffee. Anyway, uh, that's what that's for, cards, right? Glove box to get it out. Easiest way is to just squeeze at the sides like that until it drops down a bit further. Once it drops down, it'll lift straight out. Normally there's a gas strut on the side. Remember I just said to you before, can't guarantee what other people have done. See, look, it's not there. All the books fell out, don't worry about that. I'm trying to show you what's going on. So it's not there or it's not connected. We're gonna have a feel around in here. Let's see if it's in there. No, it doesn't seem to be in there. Notice I said, you know, we don't know what other people have done because quite often they break them. There's normally a, a little gas strut that goes on the side of the glove box at the left side here, and it hooks on. It's under inside there, basically. Let me just know, it's not there. Falling down, no, they've just gotten rid of it. They've busted it and gotten rid of it. Look, it doesn't matter. I mean, your glove box still works. Let me just have a look and see what you can see from where you are. And work out if that's gonna work or not. Yeah, you can see, good enough. So we knew, we knew there'd be something going on. It's been to people, you know, people. This is why we do this, to help you guys learn to do it yourself. I can't do them all. Put, please, like I always say, put your hand up if you can do these simple jobs because it seems way too many people working on cars that can't do it. So, glove box is out. We'll go through what the procedure, if the gas truck was there in a moment. What I would do, basically, once it drops down, that allows the hinge, it's on the correct angle, so the hinge slides straight in and out, no resistance. Um, what I do is, once you pull that out, you can gently go like that, the glove box will actually sit, hang, you know, as long as it's not fully loaded up, it will actually sit still connected on that, that gas strut there without breaking anything. And it'll just sit like that and you can do what we're about to do. Or you can just slip it off. I just gently, once you drop that down, this in that order, the way we did it, you could gently slip that off and then just sit it down on the floor like that, okay? Then when you go to put it back on, it's your choice if you want to put the glove box that back in and then try and do it, I think. Maybe that works better, but I just lift it up and I click the gas strut back on, like so, and then I slip the glove box back in, which we're about to do without the gas strut, because it's not there. Okay, so you've got that white cover in there, it's got a little clip each side, it's just a cover, you just squeeze it like that and you take it off, simple as that. So it says up, you can't go wrong. And it's got a Ryko one in there, that's cool. Cabin filters, we're not too fussed about, it's just a cabin filter. I actually like these Ryko and the Westfield ones. They can be a bit fiddly to get out. You've got to kind of get your fingernail or a finger each side of it. and You know what? It uh, doesn't want to come out. I'm going to go grab a little screwdriver to hook in there and for my usual little hooky hook tool. It's a really easy job. It can be done in a minute or two once you've done a few and you know what you're doing. Um, this one's just been a bit difficult for the video because you know that's what they do. So I'll just use that tool to give it a pull. Uh, looks like it's got some leaves and some. Looks pretty old, so we're going to get rid of it. Um, as I said, I don't mind the Ryko one. Just have a look in there. 
make sure everything looks normal and it does it's pretty clean in there here leaves a little bit of dust so we're going to can that one Ryco, I'll give you the Ryco part number as soon as I'm taking it out. This is a 2017 RCA 164MS. Okay. If you want the Ryco one, I don't mind it. A lot of people don't mind these thick, um, the uh, Westfield ones, which I think is a Ryco company anyway. Could be wrong. But, right. So I'll give you the Westfield part number in case you want that. Right, WACF0040, okay, says interchangeable with, I don't know, is that one of those numbers I just read to you? Anyway, they are quite thick and heavy, look, they flow just fine, don't worry what people say, they flow fine, I've been using them for years, there's other brands, Fuel Miser and the Repco ones, I think they're the same as each other, and similar sort of uh, medium to this, and obviously you can figure it out, airflow is downwards, so, you know, pick the side, blue's facing down, whatever, right? Um, there you go. So that just goes straight in there like that. Well, it sits flush. Happy days. Grab your cover. Oh, where, how did that go? Up. Click that in. Click, click. Right. Happy days. Your glove box. Just keep it down at that lower level. And the hinges will just slip on real easy like that. They're already on. You can squeeze that in if you like, but it's not going to hurt to just push it straight upwards like that and click in position. Right. So squeeze it to release. Right. Just push it up or you can... You can squeeze it like that to put up whatever you like, right? Um, and then if you've got your gas strut hanging there, you could just, you can't see from where you are, but it's on the left side here, you just clip it back on. Of course, the glove box still works fine with that. It just drops like that, right? You know, it's a bit of a quality thing, you know? They toy out of like, you know, nice smooth, shh, normally goes like that, right? But instead you've got a situation like this. Anyway, guys, that's how to change the cabin filter. All right, so with this one, we've um, given it a bit of a clean up as you do. It was a bit grubby, so then you can see what's going on if you've got leaks or problems. Much easier to see what's going on if it hasn't got a couple of layer of grease or grime over it. Um, secured that battery we um, found was insecure. Checked the terminals, of course, as well, so it's all secured now. Had a look at the diagnostic side of things again as we mentioned in other videos doesn't look too bad but they have done a lot of cases it's a little bit rattly we've got further time to spend on it yet you know we're about 1 p.m we've been on it all day um and obviously because we did the brake fluid change and bled that through we give it a good wash out underneath around the wheels and that because brake fluid will take off you know paint and stuff like that it's got to be washed off so we've done all that it's, she's all cleaned up pretty well done just got a few final checks and uh top up that power steering a little bit and yeah so there's a whole lot more to it than that that's basically just going through the things that get done and changed and uh how to do some of those items and a few things i suppose you need to check and top up and whatever so anyway guys hope that's helped hope you enjoyed the video and more info coming your way if you haven't already don't forget to describe uh, subscribe describe subscribe turn notifications on so that you get informed when the next video comes along Alright guys, see ya. Thanks.